Welcome, my name is Raj Basord. I'm a psychiatrist based in London. And I'm in conversation today with Pippa. Pippa had an experience of being diagnosed with bipolar illness, sometimes referred to in the past as manic depression. Pippa, tell us a bit about how it all started. It all started, I remember, in Sainsbury's. I was with my daughter, and it was 2001, and I had a sort of mini breakdown, and the management were very good and sat me down with my shopping, and eventually I was composed enough to go and drive home with her. And then I was doing a course um, to do with computing and finding it very pressurised. I was at the end of my six-month period of job seekers' allowance and didn't know how I was going to survive as my husband wouldn't complete an assessment form for me to get further benefit. And things seemed pretty desperate. And um, it ended up that I was sectioned because he went abroad to take his sister on holiday. My husband is Greek. And I was alone with the children. My son, Alex, who's the elder, and my daughter. And ended up being seen by my GP and another doctor and taken to a hospital in southwest London. You said you had a kind of breakdown in, in the supermarket. Could you say a bit more about what happened? Everything began to be a bit unreal and I, I must have lost touch with reality momentarily. Do you remember anything else about what happened at that moment? Um, well, I'd been feeling very elated for a few days and nights. I was having difficulty sleeping and would get up very early in the morning and drive up to the village and talk to businesses in the high street about sales of flowers and this, to the estate agents and generally packing an enormous amount into one day and not taking any rest time, time out. When people get elated, other things happen to them as well in terms of their social engagement, for example. They get very socially engaged with people around them. Was that sort of thing happening to you I as well? I was definitely less inhibited. I would speak to strangers about a course that I had developed in my mind. I'm an HR person by profession. And um, I wouldn't, it would, didn't matter that I didn't know them. I would just seek an opportunity to engage in conversation. And, and often people who are having these experiences um, develop grandiose ideas that they have developed a special plan or that they're special people with special powers. Did that happen for you? Well, I certainly envisaged this course that I developed that it was going to be a great success in the City of London. Where I'd have people beating a path to my door. Yes, that's true. And what's happened since that initial episode? Um, I was in hospital for three weeks. My husband returned to this country straight away and visited me. And I've been in hospital two times since that, but not for the last six, seven years. I was discharged this time last year to my GP by my consultant psychiatrist. And I feel very well. My husband thought I was going manic earlier this month and increase my lithium. I, had, I left a message for the psychiatrist, but I haven't heard from anybody. I, I do notice that um, your hands are shaking a bit. That's, that can be a side effect of lithium. Yes, I was wondering, it is. I was I'm wondering seeing about the that. neurologist next week. Okay. They said I might have Parkinson's, but he's not absolutely sure. Okay. And this has been going on since August 2012. Okay, but your hands so didn't, didn't start shaking a lot more um, after the increase in the lithium, did it? Did they? Um, when I went on lithium, they started shaking, yes. Okay. So I was unable to wear my contact lenses, for example, for a number of weeks. Okay, and have you had um, some blood test levels checked for the lithium? Because that's very important. It's 0.5, yes. Okay, okay. And when was, can I ask when was the last time you had one? Um, September. Okay, okay. December, December okay. I think. So, um, what about your relationships with doctors and therapists that you've experienced in your, in your journey to these, these symptoms that you've had? Could you say a bit about that? Well, I had a consultant psychiatrist to begin with, the one who um, looked after me when I first was hospitalised, that left a lot to be desired. 
he invariably saw you late. He never had read the notes, never knew what medication you were on, nor the dosage, and didn't seem to be very interested. He was forever looking at other files, and I just had the impression that his mind was elsewhere. And, and that sounds like a terrible experience. Was that a common experience of people you encountered in the, in the health service looking after you? Um, I found the nurses and the health care assistants on the ward um, a mixture, but most were very nice. And they were listening to... They, no, at that time, the first time, they were not really interested in one's comments and suggestions. But my second and third experience in hospital was vastly different. I was a voluntary patient on both occasions. And I really found that they listened to what one said. For example, you referred to my tremor, and that was particularly bad. And I asked for assistance in carrying a cup of coffee. And the healthcare assistant refused. And I brought that up with the ward manager. And what happened? They said that they spoke to the agency. Okay. But I never heard any. I never heard what happened after that, if anything. So it doesn't sound like a lot of the time it was a very positive experience in terms of your interactions with with people that were meant to be looking after you. Um, some things were positive. I made a great friend of the hospital hairdresser and used to have my hair down every week, which cheered me up. And the pastoral team were excellent too. When you say pastoral, what do you mean? The people in the, the church? Pe- yes. Okay. You know, it's fascinating, but my I, I commonly um, get this, which is people who've experienced psychiatric services or, like, a, a, a going to a psychiatric hospital often have had the most therapeutic encounters with non-psychiatric staff, like you mentioned the hairdresser and the past. It's often people who've got nothing to do with psychiatry that are often the most... Helpful. Well, my second psychiatrist was excellent. Oh, contrast. okay. That's a relief to hear. He really listened. Okay. And we turned out to have an interest in common, the Royal Ballet. Okay. And would talk about performances. Okay. And he also seemed to know an enormous amount about medication. He was qualified in that regard as well as psychiatry. And I've been very, very pleased. He hasn't always given me what I want, and he's told me some pretty unpleasant things because my husband has his email address and doesn't hesitate in winging off an email. Mm-hmm. He thinks my behaviour is, enti- is at all out of order. Right. How or do you feel about that? Ordinary. How do you feel about that link um, between the psychiatrist and your husband? It seems that he's got a very neat way of contacting him and an effective way which I don't as a, nobody's returned my call since the 20th of December Okay, what about your current relationship then with your psychiatrist? Um, I saw him in beginning of September which was not because of my mental state but was to do with my medication I was hoping to lower the dosage as well as lithium I take 5 mils of Arapiprazole daily and I thought that one or the other was making my tremor worse and wondered if I could reduce it. But he wasn't keen on the idea at all. Hmm. Yeah. Can I ask what dose of lithium are you taking? Um, 400. Just, just 400? Yes. That is quite a low dose, actually. Yeah. OK. Um, so what about your other experiences? Like you've attended various... Um, Self-help groups. Yes. What, what's been happening on that front? I was asked to. I went to the one in Chelsea, uh, run by Bipolar UK, which was which met in a community centre near the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, and I was asked to facilitate that, which I did for about five years, and we had a real mixture of attendees. There was a regular call people who came to most meetings, but also a number of people who dropped in, including a number of people for whom English was not their first language. And I thoroughly enjoyed the experience. Sometimes it was like herding cats. If you had people who were high at the meeting, they'd be fighting to get the microphone, so to speak. Um, And the depressed ones must have found their behaviour, the manic brigade's behaviour somewhat irritating I always imagined. 
Do you think it's a helpful thing to do, to go to groups like this? I do. I still go occasionally to the Central London group. Why is it helpful? It's helpful because it's interesting to be with people who really, really understand you because they've been there. And, of course, everybody's bipolar is different, but we all have, be, have felt low, and most people have felt high as well. Have you had any negative experiences of these self-help groups? Well, they can get a bit unmanageable. People can stray off the point, so they do have to be well chaired. If someone is listening to this who recognises that they may be experiencing some of the symptoms you've experienced, what would your advice to them be? Um, I would advise them to seek clinical help. Even though you've had a, some quite negative experiences? Yes. So why would, would you advise them? That would be my recommendation. Why? Because they may, might need to change their medication or the dosage. Suppose they've, they've not, never actually been diagnosed. Suppose they've never actually seen a doctor. Um, then I would advise them to consult their GP as soon as they felt able to, and if necessary, make notes of what they wanted to say beforehand and or take somebody with them if they felt that would help. What about um, negotiating your way through the system? Have you any tips or advice on how to handle doctors and the system in general? I think it helps to put yourself in the position of the other person and to realise that they are extremely busy and there are lots of demands on their time at the moment. Well, at the moment, for the foreseeable future. Do you have any thoughts about how the system could change to make it better, to improve? What are the key improvements you would like to see? Um, I've been on a few groups to, working towards the psychiatric service of the future, but the last meeting was cancelled, which we only discovered when we got to the King's Fund. So do, are you saying you think that people who've had your experiences should be more involved in the yes. planning of services? Yes, I do. That was an example of poor liaison between the charity and the King's Fund, and people's time was wasted on that occasion. What about the training of psychiatrists? Do you have any thoughts on that on that front? Um, I de I'm on the revalidation committee here, and I think it's really important that continuous professional development gets taken extremely seriously and thoroughly. Does that mean you've had a negative experience of psychiatrists' um, knowledge of the subject? No, but thinking about lawyers, for example, I think it's very easy just to tick the box and not do it as effectively as one might. When you referred to here, we're actually speaking in the um, headquarters of the Royal College of Psychiatrists in central London. Um, so you, you come here, you've been here before, so you're, you're linked in some way with the college. Yes, I'm on the service users forum. And what does that mean? That means we have quarterly meetings and we also work very closely with the carers, which I like. Rethink, where I volunteer each week, is a primarily a carer's organisation, although service users' interests are, of course, represented. What's been your most frightening experience uh, on this journey you've been on in terms of these bipolar experiences? I think probably when I was psychotic, when I was in hospital. And what happened then? I just had... I didn't have any threatening thoughts, but I had some pretty, in retrospect, alarming thoughts. About. Could you say a bit about what they were? Um, I had one that was connected with the broadcast media and which tailored the news broadcast nightly to one's particular interests and activities. So you thought that the news was about you? No. Okay. No, well, the news wasn't about me, but the news was aimed at me in a way that suited my view of the world and what rather than the news next door which would be different and why did you think that was happening what, what do you think was behind that did you have a theory um i think bet it will come true in one day in the future you'll be able to opt out of the sad stories if you wish and just have the happy ones but you found this a frightening experience at the time i did because it wasn't real okay was there anything else that was happening at the time that was frightening for you um well, I, was, I did feel that I was in good hands at the hospital, but um, I didn't like the interruption to my personal life and the feeling deprived of my liberty, being locked up and being told by fellow service users that it was worse than prison. What was, what was worse than prison? 
the conditions in the hospital. And did you agree this with that? This was the first, was it the first or second admission? Second, did, I think. Did you agree with that, that the conditions were bad? Well, I've never been in prison, so I haven't really got a view. But um, I, d I doubt it, though it is true that they spend less on the meals per person than people locked up. In prison? In prison. Hmm, OK. So, um, what was your lowest moment? I don't get profoundly depressed. I've never been unable to get out of bed in the mornings because I've got children that I, who are still at home and I get up and make sure they're all right. Um, but I have had depressions in which I've been totally uninterested in anything in the in anything in life. I won't go to the theatre, the cinema, I won't make a phone call, I don't buy anything. And um, life is pretty dull and monotonous. And did you ever get so hopeless that you felt like doing away with yourself? I've never felt like that. I've got a strong religious belief and the family would prevent me from taking such a course. How has a strong religious belief played itself out in terms of the fact that you've had bipolar illness as well? Has there been a sense in which that, that was ever part, part of the symptoms that you've had? No, but the psychiatrist thought that it was and one time forbade me from going to church and that caused great amusement to my fellow parishioners who imagined druids dressing up and chanting or something like that. Did you, did you obey this, this command not to go to church? Um, it wasn't for very long. I think it was just for a week or something. But I also was forbidden one time from going to the gym either. That was regarded as too stimulating. Hmm. But he doesn't approve that I water ski. Your psychiatrist <laughs> doesn't approve of the fact that you water ski. That's the case. Why? Why, Why does he not I approve? don't know. He's just too likely to set me off on a manic episode. I did an activity holiday with my daughter a couple of years ago in Greece. And he thought that was a terrible idea. He'd much rather have me on a sun lounger than playing tennis and scuba diving. And is this is this a psychiatrist skiing. that you get on with? This I is suppose. the one I get on with. Yes. Okay, but when he when he gives his opinion about what he doesn't approve of, um, what's happening? Are you having a dialogue about this sort of thing, or he's just issuing his these injunctions? I think his word is law. Sorry. I think his word is law. Oh, I see. Okay, but is it is he trying to get at the idea that he's worried that if you water ski, you might become unwell in terms of? destabilising your mood? Yes. Uh, well, when, at certain points in time, yes. Okay. I water ski every week in the summer. OK. Surely, I mean, it's difficult for me to comment, but surely it's better that you do things that you enjoy doing, but you do them in a way that doesn't destabilise your mood. So I wouldn't be... Well, that's what I think I do do. I yes. have friends there at the lake and enjoy the atmosphere and the environment. Yes. OK. Some people hearing this might be quite surprised to hear that psychiatrists sometimes, like, command people not to do <laughs> things like water ski. What are your thoughts about that? I hope there would be space for negotiation in the future. OK. Pippa, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.